so um, approaching week four, as we said, uh, uh, the assignment will be uh, studio work, uh, which uh, comprises of creating a sound walk and recording a soundscape. So I kind of want to talk about uh, what these assignments are. Uh, but before going into that, I want also to relate this to this week's readings uh, um, and specifically the second paper, the Moray Schaeffer's paper on the music of the environment. Because soundwalk and soundscape are actually um, compositions, if you want, uh, that have to deal with sounds of, um, of the environment, or it could be um, you know, natural sounds, it could be indoor sounds, it could be more industrial sounds, but, uh, uh, and also the fact that we are uh, so much drowned in, in music as well, um, and this is also something that uh, Murray Schaeffer mentions, uh, kind of the hi-fi, lo-fi sound, the musical aspect, the emotional or the acoustical sound, they're all blended. So you can include music, of course, as part of the soundscape. Uh, but uh, the compositional idea uh, relies on a sketch, uh, which uh, you will design first. And this is the sound walk. Uh, this is kind of maybe less conventional way of, of composing uh, um, uh, uh, an acoustic piece. Um, so I don't want to call it music as such because it might be a little, um, you know, I wouldn't say troublesome, but you know, it, it, it's not radically different from music that we hear today, but it's definitely not thinking about music in, in conventional or traditional musical terms. So for people who um, have strong conviction, um, convictions about what music is, this is uh, more of an acoustic composition. Um, so let, let's kind of uh, remind ourselves of some of the ideas uh, of uh, Murray Schaffer uh, about the music of the environment. And just as a quick um, uh, confirmation, um, can I get a thumbs up about seeing the, the paper? And I hope I'm sharing the desktop. Yeah, that should be fine. So you should be seeing this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really see. Yeah, okay, I got, got some thumbs up. So great. Uh, so I'll kind of scroll through the paper because you should have already read and got uh, familiar with, uh, with the idea. So uh, dealing here with moving the zoom window out and in. Oops, yeah, okay. Um, so uh, one of the uh, creative styles or works of uh, Murray Schaeffer was really uh, the idea of um, sound ecology or uh, documenting or exploring how um, the sounds around us uh, change as uh, as the environment changes. So the acoustic ecology um, has a long history and uh, even though it's a new term that uh, he pretty much coined, um, the article reviews Kind of the, the changes and developments in music over time. And in that respect, uh, it a little bit um, reminds or, or correlates to that uh, historical perspective that uh, Atali gives in his political economy paper. But here, uh, what uh, Murray Sheffer does, he looks uh, not so much uh, into the question of uh, music as, as, a, as a product, music as, as something that is uh, sold uh, on the marketplace and how the means of production and the commodity and the consumption of these musical music uh, as commodity uh, parallels the development of, uh, 
of the Western economy and the society, uh, he looks at this more from the perspective of, uh, I would say, uh, the ambience, kind of contemplating about the sounds. Uh, he doesn't uh, really take the economist perspective, but the the historic parallel could be almost traced to uh, same points that Atali talks about from uh, from his economist perspective. Uh, so as the world is changing, uh, the the way uh, 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 Murray Sheffer talks about is really starting from. Uh, very old uh, Greek mythology, but what you know, what created the sounds? And he mentions, of course, the these two different uh, Greek myths. One that speaks about music that uh, was created from the emotions or listening to, um, you know, the hundred cries of Medusa. So uh, the idea that music conveys emotions uh, and uh, human expression while the other one is Hermes tapping on, on the shell of a turtle which means he discovered the resonance he discovered an acoustic aspect so even in this early reference that you know musician who deals with these sounds can treat them very differently he could treat them as, as an acoustic phenomena or he could treat them as something that conveys a message maybe the message is rather abstract maybe deals with emotions and, and sentiments and the human condition uh, so one is maybe internal and one is more objective uh, and uh, abstract given this assumption this definition which was actually something we introduced very early also in week one speaking about the idea that you know what is sound you know the changes across cultures but it can be also something that uh, relates to human intent and the meaning that you give to sound and doesn't have to be uh, musical in, in, in a uh, specific uh, cultural uh, definition, uh, we continue to really looking into noise and, and, and sound, right? So uh, we have been dealing with this dichotomy of uh, sound as, as a physical phenomenon and sound as, as a, a, a way of artistic expression early on. Uh, but uh, as we trace sound in time, in this case, sound in historical time, uh, what Murray Schaffer talks about is really the role that music played in notions of uh, of God, of clair, clair, clair audience. Okay, so it's not clairvoyance, it's clairaudience, uh, instead of clairvision, clair listening. Uh, so it kind of mentions the fact that music is used uh, as some kind of a control of. Um, he doesn't mention violence as such, uh, but uh, creating order and disorder and looking through into this through uh, religious perspectives maybe relates to the early use uh, of sound, which is re related to a lot of religious rit rituals. Um, then, uh, speaking about uh, you know rural soundscape, listening to the environment as such. Uh, he, uh, he starts signaling or, or suggesting that uh, something's going to change, right? You can listen to the environment again uh, as uh, being uh, immersed in uh, sounds of uh, uh, you know outdoors, indoors uh, of of your uh, well of your environment, really. Uh, but as uh, the technology is starting being more prevalent, he brings up the question of hi-fi and lo-fi in the sense that uh, what we would be attentive to, what we'd be listening to, uh, starts uh, having more and more of, in some sense, industrial noise incorporated in, in it. So for Murray uh, Schaeffer um, is kind of obscuring the natural sounds by man-made sounds and he speaks about lo-fi and hi-fi in that sense which then when the industrial revolution comes uh, we have more and more blending of uh, uh, of uh, 
natural sounds, man-made sounds, and of course he mentions, uh, uh, you know, things that uh, later on Rosola talked about, and uh, he mentions him, right? He mentions the art of noises and how uh, that non-musical mechanized type of reproduction of music or production of music, not reproduction yet, production of music, of generation or the musical instruments that incorporate noise in the machine like was also translated into more classical pieces. So we didn't cover any of the you know, Honegger specific or uh, Antel's Ballet Mechanique. Uh, mm, no, I don't think we have it as one of the examples, but uh, you, you can check it out. It's it's going to be interesting electroacoustic kind of uh, piece, tape piece, uh, Prokofiev's uh, uh, piece, uh, which is in Honegger's, they're all orchestral pieces. So, uh, um, so you can either imitate them with the instruments or you can actually use recordings. But the fact is that the vocabulary expanded. And, and then he talks about schizophrenia. So also in Natalie's, we kind of trace this from the idea of controlling uh, you know, noise as, as violence and maybe ritual or religious use into the idea that it becomes industrialized and the industrial society basically uh, for Atali, it was the stage of uh, representation, basically the idea that you could treat music mathematically, you could treat music as, as a notation and start investigating quite an elaborate musical structures, harmony, counterpoint, and then creation of the orchestras and division of labor. That was for him, you know, the, that precursor of the industrial revolution. Uh, and uh, Schaeffer doesn't go into the, this kind of uh, perspective, but he acknowledges that, you know, the industrial aspect of our environment found its way into music. Uh, and then uh, just following a little bit that logic of Atali, when Atali speaks about reproduction, uh, uh, Schaeffer talks about schizophrenia, uh, because he speaks about the idea that you have now a split between the original sound and its uh, electroacoustical transmission or reproduction. And really this starts this age that you could either uh, print records or eventually uh, send them on radio wa waves or uh, later on in the internet. Uh, it kind of parallels in Atelier's uh, consumer culture, the rise of the pop star. Um, Schaeffer more thinks about the impact it has on the person. So the idea is that sound loses its originality. So we talked about this actually uh, in our uh, uh, Tuesday session. We kind of listened to some, some interviews with Atali and other musicians who spoke about the idea that the abundance of music, proliferation of music, made it kind of lose its value and we lost the authenticity. Maybe that's what will come back. Uh, but at least the idea that the sound is not any any more uh, limited or located in, in space and time of the musician who produces it, but it can be transmitted wherever, it can be also manipulated, yeah, it can create virtual acoustic spaces. Uh, so uh, this is what uh, Murray refers to schizophrenia. Uh, and, you know, it kind of further develops this idea, so I don't want to devote too much time to this. But I think uh, at least when, when you approach now the soundscape, uh, the awareness of all of these different aspects of sound, also across maybe the development of uh, technology, uh, can give you some, I would say, perspective or some way of uh, thinking and rationalizing uh, the compositions that you did. So of course the acoustic design, the sound design, is really uh, uh, where uh, you know for for today's artist uh, you think about this. You know you, you can having or having the awareness of, of all, all of these different aspects in the evolution of sound, uh, you could say, well, eventually I want to go back and uh, uh, develop my sensibility the idea that I, I pay attention to 
uh, little nuances in sound um, and uh, this is where the design really comes in. So uh, let's now kind of switch back to uh, Canvas and see how we uh, address that in, in the soundscape and um, sound work uh, assignment. So looking through, uh, you know, through the module uh, definition, the studio. Uh, here's, I mean, we provided some examples of assignments from past years. Um, so I will go a little bit through them today, just to make sure uh, you kind of have have an idea of what what it is. Uh, and then uh, I'll read again uh, through the definition of the assignment because it might be a little more like formal and technical. Uh, so one way to approach um, uh, a sound walk, uh, and let me first explain the difference between sound walk and soundscape. Uh, sound walk uh, is just a set of instructions of listening to sequence of sound of events uh, that happens uh, during a physical walk in an environment. Uh, you can think about this as sort of a score because it has time, uh, but also it has certain locations with instructions of what to listen to. So what generates the music, the, the orchestra, the performers are just, you know, the natural sounds that happens, happen in these locations. But since it might be a little difficult with all the schizophrenia or uh, and I will mention also the, the concept of reduced listening. I mean, are you listening to the sound? Are you listening to the source of the sound? Uh, how do you read sounds? I mean, there's so much ambiguity in reading a sound. Um, so you need also to provide uh, explanations of what actually you want to listen to. And this whole sequence uh, with more or less um, approximate timing creates uh, a piece, uh, but it's more like a score than the recorded piece. So this is the sound walk. The idea of a soundscape is actually using the recordings of sounds uh, during your walk. So uh, you basically uh, carry with you a little recording uh, instrument uh, and the tape or your, or your phone. Uh, and you capture sounds from all of these locations. So you already have sort of a timeline, but soundscape actually uh, is is a much shorter piece what you have to do i mean uh, is condense all of these recordings into uh only like a few minutes three four minutes uh, recording so you'll have to be very selective so it's like when we ask you to record a uh, beautiful sound you had to extract the 30 second clip right i mean even if your beautiful sound was uh, a song it might have lasted uh, three four minutes uh, um, and maybe it had a lot of dynamics, you would kind of capture a short segment and, and kind of look into the sound qualities of that uh, uh, excerpt. So here, uh, especially since these are like textures or natural sound sound effects, and, um, you know, it might take you a while to sit here and, and, and you know, hear whatever the instructions tell you, but in the recording, you kind of grab that moment and then you you just paste them uh, if you wish in the same sequence but since you're now doing editing so it's not only chopping them into shorter sequences and kind of making sure that you know the volume is approximately uh corrected because we don't want like from very quiet to very uh, loud uh just maybe because the recording condition may changed you don't want to just slap them like this you know you want maybe play a little bit with balance and also crossfade them or made some kind of a transition that will make it a, a, a compelling sequence that you condense maybe a 30 minute walk into a three minute uh, musical piece. Now, once we open this up to editing, you're also free to add other things on top of it. Um, and uh, you might as well even somehow change some of the order if you feel that now aesthetically this actually makes an interesting listening experience uh, which doesn't really uh, follow one-to-one -one, uh, this map 
but uh, this is really for somebody who kind of in the process of editing feels that you know he needs to have some artistic control or sound design uh, criteria uh, or uh, in terms of you know the, the overall structure of the piece he wants to intervene uh, you don't have to do that I mean you could basically just follow create a sound walk and then uh, summarize this in the same sequence just with some little basic editing so it sounds nice uh, into a shorter piece so in, in the simplest way sound walk is a summarization of your uh, so soundscape is a summarization of your sound walk okay and sound walk is the score and the soundscape is a performance but it's kind of condensed in time and uh, one is written one is acoustic um let me see if there are any questions because i am not following the chat window yeah please ask me because i think at this point i'm really kind of trying to make it clear what are the expectations and uh how you handle this so um uh, let's kind of take a look at the at couple of a couple of examples right uh and these are uh student works from uh previous years um so for instance this this one okay uh to begin the sound walk start at starbucks at the corner of mission boulevard and west mission bay drive begin by soaking in the sounds of this location so what does it mean well i mean it, it does tell you that you have to wait there and what you're going to listen to, listen to the people who are outside drinking coffee. So if you can hear the espresso machine and listen to the sound of traffic going around this busy intersection. So it already takes you outside of just, you know, it's not just a tourism, it's not sightseeing. It's actually acoustic sightseeing. And uh, you can close your eyes and, and listen to the sound. So I guess, you know, you have the chatter of the people, you have the, you know, uh, serving you know the, the clinging of the dishes the coffee cups the plates the espresso machine with its uh, whatever um you know steam and uh it's an ambience but it's also an acoustic event uh, uh and uh as i kind of uh, look on the corner of my uh, at the chat yes i mean you you do both you do this text okay uh, and this text should be accompanied with, with a drawing, with a map. And then you go and uh, do the recording. So, um, uh, about going outside of the house, uh, no. I mean, you don't have to go outside of the house. So this is kind of, it really depends on, you know, um, whatever the situation is in terms of if, if you're allowed to go outside, if you want to go outside, if you feel safe. But you can do a soundscape, and I have a few examples, actually. I think I summarized them also. Uh, maybe I'll show them from uh, from my drive. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the, I think it's linked to the, uh, on the on the page as well. Uh, oh, that's a campus soundbox, sorry. This one. Uh, everybody can see the um, uh, the word document. Uh, okay, how can I see your thumbs up? Yeah, just to make sure I'm showing the right screen to everybody. Yeah, okay. So here's an example of a sound walk in your apartment, right? Uh, so uh, the description is, and unfortunately I don't have the sound linked to this one. Uh, the other examples do have, uh, I mean, you can also see who is, you know, who is the author. I mean, people, some of our uh, previous students who kept their soundscapes uh, on SoundCloud, so we're kind of referring to them. Uh, uh, but uh, um, here is a description of an indoor soundscape. Uh, so you go and you wake up from the natural sounds of the morning, birds chirping and crows, uh, and crows cowing. You might rustle around in the bed uh, a bit before getting up for the day. So, yeah, you can go ahead and, and kind of record that. Uh, you go and you brush your teeth. So you have, you know, the, the, I don't know if it's electric toothbrush or just normal toothbrush, but you have um, the sounds of 
rinsing and the sound of the tap water growing. Now, it's clear that this is such a very clear daily experience that it might be very hard for you to be disconnected from sort of this, uh, I'm going to say, uh, um, it's almost kind of a radio show thing. You just go and, and, and things happen. So it's like the story of somebody waking up. But, um, you know, um, kind of the incentive or or the, the the goal is to go a little bit abstract if you can. Um, of course, the instructions are, are you know, if, if, if you just follow this and you explain what you listen to and you provide these examples, that's fine. But if you find a way and if you want to manipulate a little bit the sound and take it outside of that perceptual realm, basically playing around with this notion of reduced listening, uh, where uh, what um, we call you know the surrogate meaning of sound, or the the meaning of sound, you know the recognition of the object that created the sound, which usually dominates our perception. If you can get away from this, now you can get away from this by some sound manipulations. Uh, you could uh, play around with changing the, the pitch or, or filtering the sounds, do something that kind of makes it uh, a bit of maybe surreal, okay? So the question of realism, surrealism, you know, we're not going to go into these uh, you know, questions of, of, of uh, the isms, the, 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 uh, the ideologies and styles in art, but um, kind of trying to abstract the sounds a little bit will we'll kind of give it a touch that makes it so when somebody else listen to this he will be a little bit thrown away from that you know very concrete representation of somebody waking up in the morning and go so so this is kind of a, a set of uh examples and one thing is because uh you designed this you can actually give instructions you can give listening instructions you can also give instructions of uh actions that create sounds so of course you know uh, rinsing and, and doing uh, brushing your teeth makes a sound here it seems like a daily activity but you know when you go to the kitchen if you want to uh, have this the sound of, of a toaster clicking that's kind of very designed sequence if you want to hear this cling of, of, of a clock or something so uh, you can design your experience the other thing is which uh, is really natural for, especially if you have a very limited and very concrete set of sounds, is uh, do this over different times, okay? Uh, if outdoors, you know, you do a sound walk, you start at a certain time and there is a continuity, uh, here maybe it's easier and more natural to think about blending, you know, sounds from different times, uh, going back and forth or creating some sort of a, a story which is not just a linear time sequence uh, but it can go and also it can have flashbacks and you know you're free to use this type of uh, editing to uh, create a compelling piece so um, um, so to the question of, of uh, Sebe um, uh, do, do we just audio record the sound walk? Yeah, that's that's the minimal requirement. Yes, you create a sound walk, you audio record it, you, uh, well, it's not just audio recorded, you import this to Audacity and you select uh, excerpts from your recording and you edit this into a short three minute piece because any of these things might you know, you might be recording here for uh, a couple of minutes. So even if you do two, three minutes each, you'll have here uh, 10, 20 minutes of audio at least. Um, so you need to condense it. So you can record the audio walk, you can import this, uh, chop it up, balance it, crossfade it, make sure it kind of sounds smooth. And, and yes, you're done. Uh, if you want to go more because you love it, and um, then uh, you're free to edit more. Yes, let, let's hear some examples. Um, so actually, uh, the examples we provided are from previous uh, student classes. Uh, uh, let me see if I go back and see if some of the links work. 
so this example uh, uh, I chose because it had actually two different approaches to sound uh, sound works, and I will uh, I want to talk about this as well. Uh, if you uh, search and um, on the web, and there was a, a sound walk, um, sound walk collective, uh, their groups, they're actually people who create more professional sound walks. And, and um, this is an established, uh, maybe a little fringe or not as popular, but uh, way of making art with, with sounds and sound recordings. And uh, um, I don't want to go keep on searching. I didn't provide this link, but um, um, and I think the reason was that last time I looked for this, the, the, the website, I, I couldn't find it anymore. So I don't know what happened to, to that specific uh, example. But there were sound walks, even commissions by companies as part of their uh, uh, promotions for uh, uh, products or, or projects that they do. Uh, there were sound walks that describe certain cities. Uh, so let me kind of uh, show first a couple of these examples and just making sure that I share the sound. So uh, this is the soundscape of, uh, of this, uh, you know, of this uh, sound walk, okay? Uh, going through, uh, what is the West Mission Bay uh, location? Yeah. Yes, the mission boulevard here. Um, so let's let's play it. So you see, I mean, overall it's uh, it's short soundscape, and uh, I hope we won't hit by an advertisement or something. Your most life-changing oh, yeah. sleep is about what's underneath. Right. This is a Casper mattress. Okay. Inside, precisely one thousand five hundred and one <laughs> perforations yeah, create a cooling system so effective you won't be awake to notice. Only Casper mattresses uh, are made okay. with eighty-six is... supportive gel pods to align your okay, spine let me and eliminate. Mute this for the next thirty seconds because that's one of the problems of using a free sound um, SoundCloud account. Um, and I think we should be good to go now. Sorry, uh, this was the second one I wanted to show. Maybe the order here is different one. Let me go with the first one because that's more of a traditional soundscape and then we'll go to the second one. So this is more of a one-to-one -one rendering of the soundwalk. It's a bit long, it's longer than uh, I think uh, I would normally um, recommend. So I'll a little bit skip forward as we go, because we don't want to, you know, um, uh, have all. Uh, yeah, we're near finishing. So you can see that there are very different sound events happening. And you have to be very attentive to the sound. So, so in, in uh, ideally, I would say, if you condense it more and make more of a dynamic change, and try to avoid this uh, background hum, uh, that would be slightly better. So, uh, it is a very, um, I would say, uh, close replication of the sound work itself. There are some little chirps and some little things. So, you, you know, to appreciate this one, actually, you have to go back to the description and try to find the elements uh, but um, what um, what Vance did was he actually then uh, made kind of a musical edit a musical rendering of the soundscape and this is where you know the freedom of using and adding 
other musical materials, and that's what he describes here, uh, he, he put it together uh, using sounds that made from different synthesizers, which were inspired. So it's really uh, a free take on, uh, on that uh, sound work. Um, any questions so far? So these are very extreme examples, but uh, one was inspired by the other. Uh, okay, um, so Adrian is asking, so we turn in both a soundscape and a sound walk, or are they the same recording just condensed? So sound walk is not a recording. Sound walk is, is text and a map. This is Sandwalk. Sandwalk is a piece of instructions. And actually, uh, people publish Sandwalks sound uh, as, uh, and I think in, in, the, in the lecture videos, I think I do provide an example of uh, uh, Sandwalk in, I think, Salzburg uh, uh, by, uh, you know, a musician who kind of describes very much this uh, as, uh, as basically a sonic, a sonic experience, it's a sonic travel, but you don't, um, yeah, you, you just go and follow the instructions. So just to make clear, sound walk is the score, which means it's a text, set of listening instructions, a, a map, anything that you can do, and it doesn't involve any use of recording devices. And soundscape, indeed, yes, uh, is the actual edited recording of the sound walk. And of course, you can go and condense this. So you don't record the whole 30 minutes. This is the whole purpose of kind of uh, going through the details to make sure everybody understands. You can go and record the whole 30 minutes. You can sit there and listen to the sound that you're interested in and then open, you know, press the record button. I don't know how you select a shorter sequence, but you can basically open the mic, go through the 30 minute, and then uh, import this into Ableton, and you, you chop it up to uh, you know three, five minutes uh, piece. So uh, you can record the whole 30 minutes walk, but you don't submit it. Then you can edit this, or you can walk from spot to spot, um, so basically, uh, to answer Adrian, I, I kind of, I think I started answering without reading uh, in full your question. Uh, you know, uh, how you obtain your sound materials? I mean, do you record and then you edit or you stop and pause and, and, uh, and start recording again? It doesn't matter. I mean, uh, they're kind of related, but they're two uh, self-standing musical pieces, if you want to say. You know, you should be able to listen to the sound walk. In other words, you, you should be able to make the sound walk as is and have a, a sonic experience in, in, uh, in space and time, if you wish. You can have the, the soundscape, which is just a piece that involves a lot of musical materials which kind of blend, uh, you know, uh, actual real sound, concrete sounds. And if you wish, you can add the uh, musical sounds but um, the simplest way is just soundscape is a, a condensed version of your sound walk edited to make a compelling um, uh, three to five minutes piece. 
and now in soundwalk do you include how we edit or just write about the experience now in the soundwalk no because soundwalk is not about editing soundwalk you, you include how you listen to it. or if you have to do any action to create a sound so if you walk outside and there is a gate and you want somebody to run and take a stick and just like uh, uh, kind of hit against uh, you know the bars so it creates kind of trrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
how to listen to it. Okay, even if though we can say like sound sound walk leads to soundscape. But if you if you did editing or there is something you want to emphasize, you want to tell people uh, how to listen to this piece, uh, that helps. I mean, it's it, it's never um, you know um, something that you should be shy of really explaining. It doesn't mean that the listener, you know, uh, is uneducated or uh, no. You, you you help person to get into your world, and sometimes you do need to to write a little description uh, when when. You know, you're kind of taking somebody else into uh, something either really personal or imaginative that uh, he might not uh, grasp immediately. So feel free to add a paragraph that describes your uh, soundscape. But again, this is this is optional. Okay. Um, okay, guys, uh, guys and girls. I mean, sorry, I don't know. I don't know what's the right plural way to say, but. Uh, everyone, all my dear students, uh, thank you so much. I hope uh, uh, you know it makes sense. Uh, I think it kind of integrates a lot of the ideas that we had before, and uh, really important just to, to keep you know basically that that intent, you know, the desire to do something that uh, makes you feel good about and is meaningful and also aesthetic. Okay, uh, so I'm stopping sharing. Stop sharing here, and uh, unless there are any other questions, okay, I think we're good. Okay, great. Bye, bye, everybody.